All right, hello, this is Christian. So in this video, we're going to look at the React com uncontrolled components. Okay, so the uncontrolled components is a, a, a type of components you put inside the form where the data we call the single source of truth, the actual data is maintained in the actual DOM, like this uh, pictorial here, okay? So here we have a form in the bottom here. You have your input tag that uses a uh, attribute called ref, REF, this is not part of the DOM. The REF attribute is part of React um, attribute. And it binds to a variable called, in this case, username and email respectively, okay? So out here in the, uh, out, back in the source, you would then create two variables called email and username, and you bind that uh, to, or you set it that to a, uh, what's called a react.createref uh, type of component, okay? And so these two variables are then now are synchronized or actually will bind to these two fields down here. But the, data, the, the actual data still is in the DOM, okay? So the only way to get this data is through these two variables here. And you get that by accessing them this way. So each of these variables has a current attribute. And then that current attribute points to the value which is the value of this element. Of course, you can also get it through the event too, but um, that's the, just the normal um, you know, uh, way. Using React method, you can use it this way to access the data. Okay, I'll show you what that's current, why that's why the current is here and what it is, why is it there, right? So this is how you normally would set up uh, in, in one example. The other one up here is, um, okay, so again, some notes. When is a component an uncontrolled component? How do you know which one is a controlled, what is not a control? So I put some notes in here saying that any input tag, as soon as you bind that input tag, the value attribute to the state property, then that input tag becomes a control component, right? So you bind that to the value via the this state that username, and then to uh, make it work though, you have to also bind uh, call the unchanged function uh, to update the data so you can see it in that uh, the field, right? If you don't do that, it's, it's not going to work. If you don't do that, if you don't include the unchanged um, function here, then what is uh, what it is is what's called a read-only attribute, and therefore you cannot make changes, okay? So these two usually go together hand-in-hand -hand like this. So that is a control component. The uncontrolled component is you don't have a binding to the state like you see down here. So notice the input uh, is not bound to any um, value, um, uh, the state, same thing down here, okay? And they are controlled by a ref. And, and so down to get the data, you will get through the ref attribute. This will just show you that uh, the uncontrolled component, just like the regular HTML DOM, okay? When you get the data back coming from the view, okay? If you hit, if you see the source view, if you print it out, you're going to see that what it is is that the event each of these attribute has an event and this type of event is part of what's called a synthetic event inside this event object you have a bunch of other properties and one of these properties is what's called the um you know the uh, like the name and the id and the class name and and the current is also part of this as well that's how you access it you access through the current attribute i show you above okay so here is an example, uh, two examples, how you can create a, um, an uncontrolled component in React. One is using the React create ref function, like you see here. Uh, for, so first you would register a variable. In this case, I call it um, a username and then you, you register that using the react.create ref function. Now that is a reference that is being ready to be used. And in order to use it in the, in the DOM, you would then create a variable or, I mean, in your input tag or whichever way it is, doesn't really matter, one of the input uh, types that you bind that to here through the reference attribute and you set it to that username, okay? So this thing here must exist in the, um, in the global space here, okay? <clears throat> Either in the constructor or anywhere outside the constructor, that variable must exist. So it binds to that, so you know, so we know where to get the data from. Okay, and then when you submit this form, then you can obtain the data through this variable as opposed to e target value, right? So you get it directly from 
this variable here. And you get that through uh, the using the username dot current dot value. Okay, you doing this method. You have to access it this way. Now the second way is um, what's called the inline arrow function. Okay, so notice in this example here. I'm going to create the same username. This time, I did not create a variable at all in the global space or in the class constructor, right? So you create that by using a, um, a callback function. So this part here is actually a callback function that looks like this one here, right? So I put here, it takes an attribute, a parameter. It could be any, any variable of your choice. That's only matter. And then it just it has to be an arrow function. And then it will assign the variable name that it creates. So this variable here, it will be created dynamically and instantly without having to recreate above here. And then you assign that to the variable that it receives. Okay, so this function here is a function. What it does is really um, the input tag, the value as you type the value here, the value is passed to this function via this variable. And so you can set a global variable called username equal to that variable. That's what it is, right? So as you can see down here, um, when you access it, you just use it because you know it, it exists right here. And so to use it, you just can call it and then now that value. And notice, notice this way, you don't have the current property because this username is already this tag. So this part here, is the same as saying input dot value, okay? Uh, as different from this one here. This one here, you see, it says the username dot current dot value. The username is the variable name. Current is the current tag, which is in this case, this tag, and then dot value. So you go one step further. That's the that's difference, <clears throat> all right? So that is um, how you use the uncontrolled in React. So let's go and take a look how this is done. I'm going to create a very simple app. I'm starting a new one here. Now, when you start it out, you know, it gave you this function component. So you have to use a, um, a stateful component, which is a class component to retain data. Uh, so I want to change this to a class component, okay? So very simple, class, and then you remove that paren, so react.component call that, and then inside here, you want to put this whole thing inside a, re a render function. Right. So you move everything here inside here, okay? And then you close it, um, yeah, you close it down here like that. Oh no, I did it wrong. The return, let's see, that's that, I did it wrong. Oh, one more, okay, a lot of, all right, what's going on? Let's do it again. I messed up somewhere. I mean, very confusing. Okay. Um, oh, oh, yeah, no, it, it, it was correct. Sorry, it, my, my typo up there. So it was correct. I have to extend after. Okay, here we go. So this is the typical class component. And I'm gonna create a constructor here. Okay, it takes the props. And then I'm going to pass the props to the super, All right? And then now um, down here, I want to create a. Um, let's see what is it's supposed to show um, the other tag over there. Yeah, I want to show this one here. Okay, so yeah, here we go. So um, what did it say? Use. Okay, it just say that I'm not using anything here because it didn't create anything. So you could create state. Right, so let's create one so that. Let's say create a state called um, username and we'll just put here blank for now. Okay, so that's my state. And then down here, I'm going to create the input tag. Um, let's put a div here. No, actually, you know what? Let's go straight to a form, okay? Form tag. And then set a form, I'm going to create a um, um, input tag, we can use that one there, input. Okay, I don't need a name in this case, you can, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use the React, um, the DOM method. I use the React method, okay? So I don't really need a name. I just need to um, bind to the F, that should be like this. And so here is gonna be a username I create. So I'll call it 
inside my suit constructor, I'll create another variable called this.username, assign that to the react.create rep. Okay, you, you create this reference and then you can use it in here. So it'll be this.username. So now it's bound to this component, uh, this reference, and then you can access it when you submit the form. So let's go down here to the bottom and create a button, call it uh, submit, okay? And in your form, you wanna put on submit and we're gonna call it a function called this.handle submit. Okay, I'm not pass anything to it. So up here, we'll create a function call handle submit, the error function. And you can put it here if you want, but I'm not gonna use it. Oh, maybe you should, yeah, but we're gonna do a prevent default. So we don't wanna load the form. When you click the submit form like this, you should notice that it doesn't refresh. Remember you do that, okay? If you turn that off, you see if I click on it, it will flicker, right? You don't want that, okay? So we make sure that is turned off. And so it does not load, oops. Load the form. Okay, let's remove that. Okay, so perfect. So now, uh, when you submit the form, okay, you, when you do everything here, you're ready to go, you click submit, and then the data is gonna come to this function, and then we're gonna store the data from, we're gonna get the data from this variable here, okay? So just to show you that it does work, we can console log that to, you know what? Yeah, let's put it outside here so we can see right outside of the form. Let's put a div down here. Oops. Oops, not div, div. Okay, so I'm gonna put here a um, output and then this is gonna be bound to um, this that user name dot uh, current that value, okay? And it says, okay, this is a little tricky because it says, um, I think, yeah, let's refresh it again. Okay, crash because this is a null property. That means that when you load this page, right, my variable here is actually null because I never updated yet. So this is null. And, and usually in this case, you put a question mark right here. It's called a, um, uh, what do you call that one? Uh, it's like a safety type of thing. Uh, that means that if it's not null, then don't put anything. Okay, so uh, we'll see what this one does, all right? Um, I don't think it'll update. Uh, but um, we'll see. And so when I click this sim something here, put some ABC here, click submit. I want to output the data to right here and also to the console maybe. So as you can see, it didn't work right. So up here and uh, to see the, the data because we never rendered the DOM because there's no change. We never touched the state, right? You don't see the output, okay? And, and so to do that, you have to do something like um, assess state just so we can see it. Okay, call it the username is equal to, we're gonna change the username and we're gonna create, we're gonna get the uh, username from there. So I'll put, um, yeah, username is gonna be assigned to the, uh, this username that current that value, okay? So again, the data is bound to this input tag via this variable. It, you get the data from this tag through the username that the current that value, okay? This is synonymous to saying like this, if I do like, a, you know, if you do like the OA, um, you know, like uh, const, uh, so you input is equal to document that get ID, right? If I pull it, for example, if I get ID like this, like input, okay? So input here. And how do you get the data is, um, oh, come on, console log, and put that value, okay? This is synonymous to this whole thing here, okay? And, and we'll see if this is true. So if I do something like this, right? And it, it, when I submit, it's gonna output the data and put it here, it's the same idea. But of course, we're not doing the dump, this method. I'm just showing you that. This is how you get this data from here, okay? And so um, why is it like that? Well, we can do this. We can do a, um, I'll show you, console log E. 
Okay, watch this. When I click submit over here, let's put Apple here, click submit. And um, I suppose the console log that. Oh, I did not do handle submit. Let's see, this handle submit. Um, refresh this. Okay. And it's not for something. Okay, yeah, I turned that off. Okay, so here we go. Right, if I put AAA, right, you see that the data, this data here is this one right here, okay? I'm getting that out through the traditional way of getting the DOM value, okay? So notice when I log this out, the E here is this guy right here. This is a synthetic base event. And this event object, make it a little bit bigger, you're gonna see, if you expand that, you're gonna see that one of these, right, has a, um, it has a target inside a target you have all these attributes right so all these are part of this the, the element here and and that's how you get this information here okay so this is like the the, the um traditional way to get this get those data so again we're not gonna go we're not gonna get to the e option okay so i just want to show you but you get it through this current object and um, you get the data from this variable assigned to the state. You change the state so that it will, you know, uh, update the state so we can put the data with the data out here because we're going to output the data down here. And, and I'm not sure if it shows up or not. Okay, so you can see that it updates that because, you know, we, we, we touch the state right here. If you do not do that, you won't see this change. So that's how you load data. I'm going to remove this again. We'll recap you one recap one more time. Make sure it's clear enough. So in your form, okay, your input tag binds to uh, the ref attribute. Let me delete this and make it very short and clear and sweet. The ref attribute binds to a variable. A variable must exist in your global space, either inside the constructor like this or outside of it. If you put outside like this, it's just remove this like that. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be inside the constructor, but usually you put it inside it because it's just cleaner that way. So as you can see, we bind to this username. And then when you submit the form, you access the form would then call this function handle submit, and then you can get all your data from those fields, and then you update your state that way. Okay, and you get the data through this object via the current property dot value. Okay, doing this method, you have to do it that way. All right, so again, so if you save and go here, you put like, for example, like uh, Jack, Jake, and that's how you get Jake's data, okay? And the and same thing here, right? All right, so this is the actual data coming from the user current, which is this guy here, right? I did not call this from the state. And to check the state, you can also put right here, um, over here, okay. you can compare. I'm just, I'm just showing you how you can compare here. Okay, so I put state variable with this dot state dot username. Okay, that's the state data. So if you type a a a, right? They're identical. Okay. So that is how you do it. This method. Now, I'm going to show you the other method, and this is by creating a, another field down here. Let's kind of duplicate this line. Uh, let's see that. And I'm gonna bind using the end, end line function, okay? Call by function. And we'll call it, um, it's a call by function. So it takes like the arrow function like this. You pass in a parameter. Doesn't matter what it is, you can call it val, it's fine. This value here will contain the actual value from this input tag, pass it to this variable inside the body of the function, you receive that, and you assign that to a variable of your choice. So let's say I'm gonna call this one here, this dot place assigned to the value here, okay? So this would be like the username and the, the city of the place, it doesn't matter. Maybe we'll call it city, okay? And um, so it just bind to the variable. And then now this city variable exists dynamically in your code. So you don't have to, you don't have to create it here, All right? So I'm gonna put this back in here, okay? I don't like it outside here. I like it inside here because it's all together inside the constructor. It's cleaner. Okay. 
So now, and then my state variable, I can create one called city and we'll leave it blank as well. So I have two properties for the city and uh, uh, state. Then down here, when I submit the form, I get my CD information and I do the same thing, right? So I'm gonna um, update my username and then I also wanna update the uh, city by going to this.city.value. Now this time, notice I did not go through the current like I did with the other one, okay? Because the way I did it here is different, right? You, if you're calling through a callback function this way, then you access the data just going through the city and then get the dot value, just like the input that value directly like that, because this city here is actually binds to the actual input already. It looks, it looks like that. Um, so you just access it directly here. If you create it using this method and the ref, uh, just bind to a variable, you have to go through the current, okay? Just remember that. I know it's, it's a lot, but it's a lot, but just to remember. And then now down here, I'm gonna output this as well. So you got the current value, I put it another one here, and we'll also put um, this dot uh, city, and then we'll put here question dot value. Okay, so it doesn't crash. Um, I think it's not like it for, oh, what, what if I do, I just put, yeah, because these, the city doesn't exist there, okay? So yeah, this one, a little bit tricky. Um, yeah, let's not put there. It doesn't exist at first, so there's, there's no value here. This one here, I created already, so it will actually work, but let's forget about that one. Just put it here. This, that, state, that, city. Okay, so I put here AAA and BBB, and then you see that it works like that. Okay, so, that is how you want to do using the uncontrolled component, this approach or this approach, whichever is convenient, whichever you like. Um, you know, sometimes it's maybe easier to do it this way. You can see what you can know right away. Um, but again, give you that flexibility. Okay, um, now I want to just update this just a little bit. Now that we understand how this work, works, I'm gonna go and update my state and my data a little bit. So let's say I'm gonna store my data inside the state here, not through you know two variable here, but if I create something like this. So let's put here another variable, like um, maybe data, and then binds to a state or object like that, right? So two layer, okay? So the data object has a city of username and city in there. Okay, so the username here, that is still here, but when you build your state, right, you have to um, you have to update your, your, your data this way. And if this is the case, then you have to do a little bit different, right? I can't just do this. I have to do like, um, uh, let's see, like uh, data. So, so I guess the easier way to do is you do this way. Okay. You would do um, const uh, state, let's go user name is equal to, and this username, right? So just copy this over here. Uh, const the city is equal to this, right? Put it here. Okay. And then inside here, then, you know, um, your state, you just want to do this, okay? Easy, right? So you put here const, you say, yeah, const uh, data is equal to this, that, stay, that data. You load the whole data in. And then you go data of the state, username is equal to username. And the data that city is equal to city, right? And then you update the data. Okay, this is one way to do that. Um, showing you I'm using a nested object inside here. I'm getting the values and then I load my local state, a copy of the state, update the data and then update that right after that. And so now, uh, hopefully it will still work just like before. Okay. Um, uh, the state doesn't load because my data, username and city, uh, username and city, uh, let's see what's going on. Yeah, that's right. I just I just didn't didn't put it down here. So this would be like 
data dot state and then data dot city. Okay. So just one one uh, little step um, more because sometimes you have to use this way. Uh, no state. Sorry, all messed up. Data dot username state that is cd okay so a a b b all right so this is a an example another example where you have a nested object and set another one you know if you if you don't understand this way make sure you review it because this is going to be very very uh, um, common we have a key we have the value of another object right i could have data like that and you have another one right so it could be like, for example, another one here, um, points, and then that will go to another object. We have, you know, um, I don't know, levels, another object, okay? So all these are your states. So make sure you're comfortable with using multiple layers of object this way, right? And then if you do it correctly, it's it's quite easy to get those, those data, right? So I do that. I don't have any other one, but it should still work because I'm updating the state. Okay, so again, this is just showing you that I have a state called data, and the data is an object, has two properties, username and city. And then I create a username as a separate variable and bind to a field, username. I create another one here, dynamically called city, bind to that input using a callback function. When you submit the form, you call this function here, and you retrieve the data from the username and from the city, the debt value assigned to a separate variable. So you don't have to, you know, put this whole thing like, you know, uh, you know, in here, right? Of course you can, you don't have to do this. You could just put this right here, it's fine too, okay? I just put that in, it's easy to see, but you can totally do this, absolutely, right? As you can see, okay, that's fine. And then, you know, get a copy of your state and then update each of those properties and then update your state. Okay, I do it this way because it's easier, right? It's easier than you go in here and do like data.username, right? And then, uh, actually I can do this. I have to do like data and then, um, you know, username and, and so forth. Okay, so it's really, it's really hard to do that inside here. Okay, so you have to do that and then you call this guy, put it in here like that, right? And then you do another one. This is the hard way, okay? I'm not saying you can't. Just put CD here and then binds to this guy here. You put it right in here like that. And then by doing it this way, um, I think uh, they did it wrong. I need another curly like that, right? So this way that I don't need this whole thing, right? Okay, so as you can see, if it's correct, it should still work, All right? So lots of ways to do it. Once you had get your, your head around this, it's, you can see how I did the whole thing here, right? If it's is it's, it's hard to see, do like I did earlier. It's easier to see that way. Okay, so that is all for this part. And then, I'll see you in the next video.